Hey yo, it's your boy Engine Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We got the usual suspects. We have Anthony or Spigs18. We have Dean or Alpha Dean or AD, however you like to call him. And Dean, why are we here today? We are here to chew bubble. Oh, no, actually, that's something else. Um, <laughs> we're here to have an editorial tonight. And we want to bring to everyone's attention or, you know, kind of discuss. MCG Kickstarters over the last two years, and we're gonna like evaluate them, talk about what was back at you know um, a specific level to see what was the bang for the buck, so to speak, you know. And um, so we're gonna look at the total number of backers, money raised, um, products received, and ultimately, is it worth it to the consumer? So, without further ado, Anthony. I um there's there was a total of six Kickstarters in the last two and a half years that we'll go over. Um, are we gonna base our judgment on each individual Kickstarter on the backing of every everything included in the Kickstarter? So we we won't base our judgment on just backing the main product, but we we're gonna base it on if if you backed not only the initial book but all the stretch goals as well. The first Kickstarter that we're going to touch is Invisible Sun. So Invisible Sun raised $664,000 plus um, $664,274. So that's $600,600. I mean, $600,000. $664,274. Two seventy four. Thank you. Very <laughs> you and did. it had a, had a total of eighteen hundred and forty six backers. All right. So we're, we're gonna base it on if you get every book. So in order for you to get every book, you had to take the control the black cube level, which the price point was five thirty nine, and that gave you a copy of the game, the directed campaign. It gave you all the stretch goal books plus all the additional items. It gave you the medallion and the sun-based secret. Um, I guess I'll go first because um, I initially did not back this. And I did not back it because of the sticker shock of the 539, to be quite honest. You know, I usually, when I back a Kickstarter, I usually back at, you know, I, I want all the stretch goals. I want everything that comes in the Kickstarter. So when I first saw this, you know, at 539, it, it just seemed really steep to me. I did back the reprint because I realized the error of my ways when I saw how cool the game actually was. But I did not back the initial Kickstarter. And I'll just mention the additional books you got so we could uh, talk about whether it was worth it. You, you got a free rules primer, which was basically, you know, a short excerpt of what was in the black cube and you know how to run the game you had the book m you know it was additional spells artifacts and other magical wonders then i'm not going to go through every um stretch goal because some of them were just increasing the page count on books but you also got the secret of the silent streets and it was a source source book with additional story arcs for characters and uh, additional material for of uh, Saturn, which is the city of Invisible Sun. You also got the Vizile kit, which was the Souv deck. Um, it, it came with some character tomes, some tokens, some additional real cool stuff. You got the, uh, I believe, let me see what else is on this list. The Slipcase and the Night Side, which was a hardcover book. Um, about dangerous and dark practices as Satine warded for protection. So that was everything you got for your 579. So what are your takes on that, guys? Was it worth it? I mean, I'll go first. Obviously, if you're like a collector um, or whatever have you, like having these physical objects, it's very much worth it. The, the production value is very nice. Um, you know, the all the stuff looks really cool. Um, Person, you know, we're talking about our opinions, what we did. I didn't back it. I just, I couldn't, I can't afford that amount of money for a game, quite honestly. Um, but it does seem really cool. Um, another reason I didn't back it is because I'm more of the, um, like, what you call it, 
on the lighter side of things, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to have to carry around all these. I know, I know they have, like, PDF versions now, whatever have you. But, like, having having to have all the little things and having to keep track of all that stuff. It's a little above my attention span. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, as far as, like, you know, you know, bang for your buck, whatever have you, it definitely does seem very worth it. If Again, if you have the money and this is something you want in your collection. Um could because again, very good stuff, you know, created by MCG. But again, personally, I could not, uh, could not afford that. <laughs> I mean, the cube itself was thirty pounds full of goodness. <laughs> you know, it was. I mean, you absolutely, and the production quality of the cube, you know, top notch. I, I, I don't think anyone questions whether or not Monty Cook Games actually produces, you know, quality books or quality stuff. But the price point was, you know, rather shocking to me. You know, I couldn't see myself. I'm like you, Al. I couldn't see myself <laughs> spending 500, you know, almost, you know, 550 bucks on something that, you know, to keep it real, the majority of our gameplay is online. And I couldn't see myself playing a game that at that time I didn't believe would translate well to internet play. Of course, Grant Ellis and, you know, material components and guys like that, you know, Dan and, you know, and Unmade Gaming, you know, and Michael proved me wrong. But at that time, I didn't believe it, it would translate well to online play. Well, my take on it was initially I wasn't doing it either. <laughs> I didn't back it initially. I, I did the reprint as well. Um, and... For me, the biggest sport problem for me was that I know I was I didn't have a dedicated room, so I couldn't justify spending that kind of money and not have something that I wasn't going to be able to use. Um, and that was my biggest thing, you know. And then the other side of the coin was the description of the game, you know, was intriguing, but again, it felt like something that made it sounded like it, it almost felt like it was going to be cumbersome in some way because there was so much. But I got to play it at Gen Con and that, you know, just shifted my perception of the entire game itself, which in <coughs> turn made it which in turn made it um something that I definitely wanted on my show. Something I definitely, you know, found that okay, this is a must have. You know, and like Anthony said, um by no means is it not worth it because the production value of what Monty Cook Games has done, you know, when they say a premium game, they mean premium. The art from, from the art to the construction of the books to the aesthetics, you know, just even even the props, you know, the, that, that hand that holds the, the uh, cards alone you know, it's just like that would be something that I want to put on, you know, display somewhere because it's just that cool. So that's my take. You know, I wasn't going to do it, but I did. <laughs> yeah. I, um. You know, since you mentioned the uh, um, reprint, which we both backed on the Kickstarter, I'll just give you the numbers to that now. You know, when they reprinted it in October of the following year, they raised an additional 339478 and they had an additional 1,505 backers. At that time, I backed at the, I believe it was the 240, yeah, I backed at the 243 level, which it didn't give me everything, but it gave me the key, it gave me the cube, and um, a couple of other things. Right. And we should also, I think it's also merits mentioning that at the time as well, they didn't have a PDF version, which they do now, which I think would change people's decisions because um, it's an additional $99 to get the PDF of everything. And at that time on the Kickstarter, which also was you know part of my decision making not to back it, that there wasn't any PDFs. Right. You know, um, but now that they do, I think it, 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 uh, it changes my decision whether or not it was worth it. Me personally, my vote is thumbs up for the Black Cube. You know, for the you know, looking at it, you know, from at the time, I kind of regret not backing the original one, but I, I finally got my cube anyway. But it's exactly. I, it was at, 
absolutely worth um, backing it. But um, yeah, you know, um, hopefully one day, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll find it online, slightly cheaper price, you know? <laughs> and then I can add that to my collection. But right now, it's just out of my limits. <laughs> But do you think it's worth it? Though? No, no, no. Most definitely, I do. I do think it's it's worth it. Um, like like for everything I said before, like all the you know production value. So all that just stuff. so everybody understands, yeah, we're gonna come up fun. with a new rating system here, right here. You're you're hearing it for the first time on the spot sorter, guys. Uh, this game gets a three cipher rating because each of us give it a cipher. <laughs> okay, that works. <laughs> all right, so now we we're gonna move on to what, in my opinion, was probably their most successful kickstart in the last two years. We're going to move on to Numenera 2, Discovery and Destiny, which um, I, pretty, I think I know the answer on this, but uh, we'll go over the numbers again. They had 4,185 backers on this, and they raised 845,258. And we're going to base our the judgment on the all books and print and all books and PDF, which was two hundred and eighty dollars. I absolutely backed this at two eighty. So did I. That was a no-brainer for me. I I would have backed it at three eighty. I think. Actually, I backed it at the patron level. I backed it at five hundred. Excuse well, I... Daddy Warbucks over here. No. <laughs> I I regret not backing it at that level. Once you started showing me the pictures of your collector's edition book, which was awesome, by the way. Yeah, that book is ridiculous. And then I got this new, the latest book, I just got part of it, The Essence of Numenera, which I'm glad you brought this up because we can talk about it. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna take the range real quick and, and jump in on this. Um, the Essence of Numenera, you know, and it's gonna come back around, just so I'm letting everybody know when we talk about Arcana of the Angels. But this Essence of Numenera book is a series of essays written by people at MCG and contributors to Numenera, uh, you know, Discovery and Destiny. And- oh, You're gonna have to let me read that. Oh, they, absolutely. They absolutely. <laughs> um, that book alone is gold. Um, and it says just a lot of beautiful things, and it has lots of artwork, you know, like splash page artwork that is in the books and stuff like that. So it's really a great conversation piece. Um, just the additional things that came about with Numenera 2 or N Numenera Discovery and Destiny. Um, I absolutely say, you know, it was worth every penny. Um, you know, this is the, the, the flagship game of, of uh, MCG. Let me go, go over the exact number of books you got and what you got on the Kickstarter. Yeah, we just do the 249 book. Yeah. All right. So you got Building Tomorrow, you know, was more installations, and, you know, was more sample communities for, you know, it was a 160 page book. You got the player guide, which was similar to the original Numenera player guide, you know, like a quick start, the basic rules, you know, uh, how to craft a character. Of course, you got the core book with the slip case, which was beautiful, by the way. It had that little, you know, the Numenera uh, metallic um, keychain, like a logo that you could put on the keychain <coughs> necklace. You also got Slave of the Machine God, which was, um, you know, an adventure book. You got building, um, that was an upgrade. You got Priest of the Ions, which is another 160 page book with more foci, more descriptors, more ciphers, more equipment. You got the Ruin deck, which is awesome. You know, um, I actually was playing around with the Ruin deck the other day. That's a really great deck. You got the Beast 33, which we just got just recently from our Kickstarter backers. Then you also have Tomorrow's Bones, which is another deluxe hardcore novel by Shana Germain, I believe. I could be wrong on that. You have the IO deck coming, which is another um, 100 card deck, you know, to uh, generate IOTOM shins and new ciphers. 
then you got um, the Explorer's Keys, uh, Ten Instant Adventures, and then and then you're gonna get the Creature Deck, which should be coming out shortly. And the deck box. Oh, and the deck box. Okay, so we're looking at this. We're talking about even if we say each book is fifty bucks at a two eighty value, we're talking about five hundred dollars worth of stuff. So this is, in my opinion, this is a no brainer. <laughs> You know, I, I like I said, I would have backed it at three eighty if if I had to. Um, and uh, just to piggyback with my opinion of whatever hell have you on this, um, you know, Kickstarter, I also backed it at the two eighty level. You know, all the books. Again, like Anthony said, it was a no brainer. All the stuff, all the books that you got, it was just unbeatable for the price. Like again, doing the math, I, I even undervalued them at like forty something a book, and even then, it was still like it was very worth yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um and as far as long as much as you guys know about me uh you know i mostly play cypher system and um you know i've played numenera a little bit now and then, like one or twice once or twice i forget how much i've played numenera but um the big draw for me was having more options for cypher system characters <laughs> <laughs> it was you know again the, the settings and stuff and all the, like the, the what is it the um the community rules and the you know the crafting rules all that stuff is really cool but again i i plan on implementing it in like cypher system stuff more than you know running it in, in numenera or whatever have you um and don't get me wrong numenera is a fantastic setting I, I, I really like it but i find myself more wanting to create my own stuff so well, that being that being said, and maybe this might get you to play a little Numenera as well, Al. That being said, Numenera is nothing but a huge sandbox. It's a playground. Yeah. Um, you know, the beautiful thing about it, it's one of the things that drew me to the game. It's one of the things that keeps me in the game. It's even one of the things that I try to tell people even about their their organized play, their cipher play stuff. Um, whatever game you're running, cipher play just kind of plugs in if it's Numenera based it's not like you know it's not like the competition it's not like you know 5e with Adventures League where you're, you're stuck buying another book for this season to play in Adventures League you know then the characters that you're playing don't regret you know is only good for that particular area and Numenera you know like you like Predation um, that's your that's your jam yes you can set. You can literally run predation as a Numenera campaign. Oh yeah, most definitely. You Why know, not? And that's, <laughs> the beautiful, that, that's the beautiful thing about Numenera. It's just, you know, I, I I love it because, like you were saying about all the stuff that's there. You know, like I mean, with the steadfast and you know into the deep and into the into the dark, you know, or into the night and all of the different into books and all of that kind of stuff. It, to me, it's just a lot of plug and play. I build what I want as opposed to being pushed down a path. And what, do you, what do you guys think about, um, you know, separating into two books, you know, the Discovery and the Destiny, and putting, you know, the additional character types in the second book? I think that was very smart and brilliant. It makes a lot of sense to me in the sense of, because it is a progression. You know, the, the beautiful part about what I, what I was saying about Numenera being that big sandbox, it still is, but here, the second book is a progression because instead of just discovering this, this ninth world, you're now building. And destiny really walks you into that realm of, of, of the architect. So when you look at the, when you look at the right and the Dell, and the Arcus, you know, those are, you could say they're niche characters, but they're not, because if you want to, you know, apply conceptualizations from other games, you know, your, um, your Dell, I can see your Dell being, you know, a roguish type, you know, but he's just enamored with going out and finding new things and, and bringing them back the right is your typical tinkerer? He could be an art. He could be a uh, an artificer or something like that from a from another fantasy game. The Arcus, you know, could always definitely be your your noble, your diplomat. Your um, he could even be a paladin. You know what I'm saying? Inspiring. You know, 
I think those two, I, I think it worked and it worked well. I think it was a smart thing. I, I really appreciated it as well. And I think at the time I didn't notice it, but what I really like about it is if you don't want to do that community building and you don't want to add those aspects into your Numenera game, you yeah. can you could still just run with the discovery book mm -hmm. just fine you know destiny is you know it's like the the sprinkles on a sunday if you want to add the sprinkles to the sunday you can but you know if you just want to run you know generic i'll call it generic numenera but if you just want to <laughs> run basic numenera with, with the discovery book you don't need destiny but you know as soon as you open that book, you're gonna fall in love with a lot of the concepts and then you're gonna wind up putting it in there anyway. But I, I thought it was actually an ingenious idea to separate it into two books. But yeah, Boop. yeah, oh. No, oh, yeah. no, I mean, I was just gonna agree. Like um, you guys hit all the points that I was gonna hit that um, if you just wanna run Numenera, you could use the one book. But again, having the additional options is always really nice. And again, like I said earlier, I, I like the additional stuff because, I, again, I can use it in the cipher system. <laughs> and you just got a sheer yeah. amount of books in this Kickstarter. This Kickstarter, you know, you got the adventures, the 10-minute adventures. You got, which I love. I love those four-page adventures, yeah. you know, those instant adventures that they put out. And, you know, you got yeah. that. And you got Elamir. There's just so many books you got in there. And here's the, yeah, yeah, because you forgot to mention Trillion Shire, we got that as well. Yeah. You know, um, and, and here's another big thing for me with, with this particular Kickstarter was that it didn't invalidate anything. So if you never got the opportunity to say, maybe you, you couldn't pick up the, the new Discovery book or Discovery and Destiny, or you just over like okay you know what i just want the new stuff i'm gonna get destined it's you got your core rule book you're good to go nothing is invalidated and the nice thing about it is you know the the callbacks that they have you know with the with the symbols so it'll actually lead you back to the original book <laughs> as well as, you know so it, it has those footnotes you know which i think is awesome you know I mean that's a staple of Monica games. They they excellent with their indexes and their footnotes. It's you know I've rarely picked up one of their books where I I can't find what I'm looking for rather quickly. And I, I think that's like a design of you know that's like well, a chalk sign of a good design team. They know how to build the book for you to find what you need quickly. But that's what I'm saying, and that's like the biggest point to me though that they, they even didn't. Even they didn't force anybody to have to buy Discovery. You could keep your original Luminera book and <coughs> will call you back to the right page in the original core book. And Al, you appreciate this. I love the fact that they kept in line, you know, they brought Numenera in line with the Cypher core rules. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Like the armor stuff. Um... Yeah, and also adding player intrusions yes which is very fun <laughs> which is you know an excellent addition to the numenera core rules absolutely it's something we've definitely been using for a long time at this point <laughs> so so what are we voting i'm voting a thumbs up a, no you know, cypher oh a, a cypher, cypher. Uh, what's a, uh, a cypher i don't know <laughs> I don't like, like, you look, you look like you're throwing up gang signs <laughs> out right oh it's <laughs> see you see you <laughs> <laughs> this is my cipher. Yeah. See you. So I guess I'll put a see you as well. <laughs> a big see you up for this one. That's right. Cipher. <laughs> Three ciphers. All right. So we're moving on to our next Kickstarter. This is probably personally my most anticipated of the, of the um, four major Kickstarters in the last two years. And this is your best game ever. Before. I know we have opinions on this, and we'll, we have some strong opinions, but let me just run down the numbers of what you get first, and then um, we'll give our opinions. First off, they had 5,591 backers. They raised $581,673. Um, and I'll go over everything you get. Of course, you get... Well, hold on. 
you're gonna get um your best game ever book which was upgraded like three times and you get you get two copies oh i'm sorry let me stop let me back up you 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 had a back at in order to get everything you, you had a back at 260 dollars which i did i think everyone here did yeah. unless i'm mistaken yeah. you're right yeah i could All right so you get um you you get two copies of your best game ever you get a deluxe edition and a regular copy and it was upgraded twice and on top of that you get a the um you get the core book redone the cypher core book redone which in my opinion was probably the main reason why i backed this and on top of that you got an additional three setting new setting books or or four, yeah. You got the Stars on Fire, which is you know sort of like a space opera, starships, you know, a science fiction setting. You science got fiction cool book. Yeah. They're toolkit, not just settings. Yeah, correct. You got Stay Alive, which was their horror, you know, new horror setting toolkit. You got. Um, they also had some videos that they're producing. Then you got. We are all mad here. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm going. To, you got God's Forsaken, which was their fantasy setting, right? Then you right. got We All Mad Here, which is their fairy tale setting. They all got upgraded. You also got an audio book. You got a, a new cipher deck, and I believe that's it. Oh no, you got a, a GM and player notebook as well included with that. And you got the art. You got the art prints of all those covers. Yes, you, you have, and you also have the character portfolios. You know, it's basically to help you track your character sheets and stuff. Uh, who wants to go first on this one? Because I know that some I'll opinion. Go, I'll go first. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, it's an awesome idea for Kickstarter. You know, advice is always a nice thing for people who are unsure of themselves. Uh, however, uh, as you guys might know. Us here, we're pretty not set in our ways, but we kind of, you know, we run things our own way. We have things, of, we have ways of dealing with things like something where we're not uncomfortable at the table having to delegate, you know, people who are jerks or whatever have you trying to cultivate a nice atmosphere. That's these are tools we already have, basically. Um, and again, if you need those tools, this should be an awesome book for you. Um, however, our biggest, or at least I don't want to speak for you guys, but my biggest draw was, you know, the setting books and the new Cypher system book. Um, and I would easily say that if um, if there was if there was just a Kickstarter for Cypher system book, I probably would have just backed that one because <laughs> that uh, guys all know I love Cypher system and I love that using just that book most of the time. So um, yeah, that was my main reason for backing it. And then they started announcing the settings, and that was just more like, hey, I definitely yeah. definitely want to get this. Um, cause again, it just gives you more options to do more things. And, um, if I, just to throw this in there, I'm probably most looking forward to probably stay alive cause I like horror ish stuff in okay. games. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, uh, if we're voting like, you know, is it worth the money or whatever? It's definitely worth the money with all those setting books and the cyber core role book thrown in there. Um, and of course the nice little miscellaneous things you get like the posters and the notebooks and whatever that all just again the sprinkles on the cupcake <laughs> but yeah that's basically my take uh dean you want to go first or you want me to go well you go ahead i'll i'll, I'll say mine i i i i'll say this for 260 dollars you, you're getting about 570 dollars worth of product if you add everything up so on that standpoint absolutely worth it just like al I'm a Cypher System core rulebook guy. I would have backed it no matter what. The minute that they added, they mentioned, okay, we adding the Cypher System core rulebook. Once again, I backed it at 260, would have backed it at 360. Absolutely worth it. But I do have a couple of issues. Your best game ever, I would have preferred it to be separate. You know, I, I sort of felt like in some senses that the core rulebook was designed to force you to purchase your best game ever even though i probably would have purchased it anyway 
but I, I would have rather have not have it forced on me. The, the second issue I had with this Kickstarter was they basically gave you two copies of the same book. You know, instead of give, you know adding a deluxe version into the Kickstarter, I, I think that should have been an add-on and I would have put much preferred an additional setting book than to get two copies of the same book. And I'm not fooling anyone. You guys both know me. I would have bought the deluxe edition anyway. But I, I would have preferred to make the decision myself as a, instead of adding it as an additional stretch goal. You know, because I'm basically getting two copies of the same exact book. So in that sense, I was, you know, a little... Um, disappointed in that aspect of the Kickstarter. I will say this about the best game ever. I can't give you my full opinion until I actually get the book in my hands because I, I'm still a little unclear on exactly what's in the book. Like, you know, we were talking to Eric Frankhouse in our last interview last week, and, you know, the four was really didn't know. We, we do know that there's some essays, and we do know that it's um, advice, but we don't know the extent of the advice. Like, is there going to be a section for experienced GMs? Or is this going to be a book that we're going to pick up and and say, hey, this is a lot of stuff. This is great advice for a new GM, but is it necessarily useful for someone who's been game mastering for several years? And, you know, dealing with people, you know, once again, it's great advice, but it's also advice that, you know, most of us have encountered and learned through practice you know, dealing with problem players. So I'm not I'm not sure if it'll be useful to me, but I could be entirely wrong once I get the book in my hands. So I, I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm bashing your best game ever because to be honest, I have to read the book first. But it's definitely a thumbs up on my side because it came with the Cypher Code rule book. And, <laughs> Automatic know, thumbs up. Yeah, that's <laughs> my, you know, like, I told Mania Gen Con, that's my gaming Bible. So, you know, anything that has the Cypher Core rulebook in it, uh, you know, I was going to back at the maximum money anyway. And basically, it's unanimous across the board. We're, we're all Cypher heads here. Like I said, I found Numenera in 2013 and did the Kickstarter for the original Numenera. And I was enamored by the idea of Numenera. But the system or should I say the lack there of crunch and the, the flexibility of the system just blew my mind. So when the Cypher system was announced after the strain and everything else, I was just completely on board, like you said. Um, and yes, for the price point, for 260 bucks, you can't go wrong. My opinion is very similar to yours, Anthony, where I don't necessarily say that the Your Best Game Ever shouldn't have been attached to the Kickstarter, but I don't think it should have been focused. I think it should have been a secondary thing or a stretch goal or something that was added on as time went on, like the additional setting books. I, I look at, uh, I, I would have much rather them call this like World of the Cypher System 2 or something, because I, I feel the same way about the best game ever. I'm not saying it's not worth the money or it's not, you know, a useful tool because I don't know. But, you know, I've, I've, I've taught people how to be game masters. I've taught people how to run tables. I've taught people how to, you know, run games for, you know, groups up to 15, 20 people. You know, I've, I've, I've done all sorts of stuff, you know, over the 40 years, 40 plus years that I've been doing this. And Cypher System, you know, like I told Monty Cook, you know, it's like his love note to me. I mean, it's like, you know, you, you really wanted me to come back because I feel like the nostalgia and I feel like I'm just starting out again. You know, so there's a lot of wonder there for me. And, you know, all those setting books, you know, are talking to me. You know, um, I, I see so much possibility. So, yes, very much worth it. Yes, I need to see your best game ever in front of me. Um, I agree 100% that I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily need two copies of the same book. 
Um, and if you were going to give me a deluxe copy, why not give me a deluxe copy of um, the Cypher System rule book as opposed to your best game ever? That's just me personally, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's basically, you know, you hit the nail. I mean, we basically all have the same opinion for all this one, it seems like. Um, and again, it's not a bad thing that it, it, this, uh, you know, your best game ever might not be for us. But again, it's hard to say because we haven't read it. We don't yep. know. <laughs> hey, you know, for for the record, if it was an add-on, I would have still purchased it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, because I, I'm really curious to see about you know, it ha, uh, has over 50 essays from game design. I would have purchased it just on the strength of those 50 essays because I would want to. We, you know, what their opinions are. And, you know, the idea of it being a coffee table book mm -hmm. is kind of cool, too. You know, I mean, I, I encounter lots of people these days because they see Critical Role or, you know, or, or any of the many YouTube shows, you know, Deborah Ann Wall, you know, the actress and all these people out there who are bringing light to D&D &D and the role playing community as a whole. You know, that's one of those things that is, is great that I could say, hey, yeah, well, take a look at uh, page 57. You know, there's an essay in there by, you know, I don't know, you know, or Monty Cook, you know, just read that, you know. So I think it'll be useful in that sense. But, yeah, I would have bought it, you know. I mean, just, you know, I, I think I also failed to mention that the subtle cipher deck is in there, too, which oh, is... Yeah really needed the subtle cipher deck is something i'm really I, you know is, i'm looking forward to it but what i find funny i find it funny and i said not saying like with us but so many people get so hung up on how to handle ciphers you know and i remember i was telling somebody like in a superhero game i don't even use the typical ciphers they're not you know items and gadgets unless you know, I'm playing like a gritty or running a gritty, you know, type of adventure where you got Batman types and, you know, people got utility belts. Yeah, okay, fine. They got cypher crap on your belt. But I run them like, you know, inspirations, intestinal fortitude, you know, th that those moments of those moments of glory, you know, for the for the, you know, hero, you know, in a superhero game, you know. Some ciphers. Yeah. It's, it's a no brainer, but that's because I'm <laughs> And, and I, will, I will say this, and I, I know some people disagree with me, but I think Cypher System handles modern games better than any other system out there right now. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. subtle ciphers are one of the biggest reasons why. You know, you could run pretty much any game. You know, you could run Days of Our Lives, you yeah. know, and use subtle ciphers because... You know, if you watch movies or books, there's always that moment where, where the main character does something beyond what their normal capabilities are for a split section, you know, split second. And that's exactly what subtle ciphers are. So yeah. that movie, you know, it's funny, you know, you bring it up. Um, that movie, uh, Skyscraper, the one that had Dwayne Johnson in it, The Rock, <laughs> where he had lost his leg, mm -hmm. you know, and this scene where he leaps from the scaffold, you know, across to the building. And that's just one of those moments, those subtle cyber moments that's that, you know, I would have called it maybe intestinal fortitude mm -hmm. or, you know, or like you said, moment of glory. Mm -hmm. You know, he pops this moment. I can make this leap even though I'm impaired, you know, because of my family, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. Just love this stuff. Man. All right, before we move... Excited. Before uh, uh, before I move on to the next one, but uh, what's everybody's vote? Mine's definitely a CU. I already forgot to see you. There we go. <laughs> Left but hand. Th this is a no brainer. I know we, we might have sound a little Debbie Downer on the you know uh, best game ever book. We shouldn't have gotten two though. I'll say that should, they should have gave us two copies of the same book in the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But it's a no brainer. See worth the money, yeah. Actually, like I said, I would have taken two copies of the rule book. Only because I want to put one on a shelf and everything. Yeah. 
All right, before, before we go into, which I think is going to bring us our biggest debate, I'll move into, they also reprinted No Thank You Evil. They had 744 backers, 60,112 bucks they raised. Um, I did not back this Kickstarter because I owned everything on No Thank You Evil. And I just went and purchased, uh, you know, the additional stuff they added after the fact. So, um, but I didn't back this Kickstarter, but No Thank You Evil, no brainer to me. I mean, I could play No Thank You Evil with my three children, or I could play it with you guys <laughs> and with four adults. It's a great game, you know, well designed. The artwork is beautiful. I have nothing negative to say about No Thank You Evil. It's actually probably be, you know, it's funny to say, but it's probably one of my top 10 greatest games of all time. Yeah, no, and it's, it's I awesome. will jump on the bandwagon and say yes. And I actually did, I actually got the first one and I packed this one because I bought the, I got the second Kickstarter to give as a gift to um, granddaughter. You know, she's, uh, how old is she? 13. And, you know, we play, you know, we play around here. Like I said, my wife periodically runs a game. And now, you know, the 13-year-old is getting ready to run her first game. So, you know, I, I definitely all thumbs up. No, you think your evil is, is I think, brilliant to, you know, and easy to bring kids. And I play with children as young as three and four. And they got it quickly. I mean, remember the rules that were taught to them and were able to regurgitate it and make, you know, even make it portable for other little people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thought, I think it's pretty awesome, you know, and I love the little people anyway. So. Oh, and just to say, so everybody knows, it was 160 bucks to get I Want to Be Awesome, which gave you everything, gave you all the stretch goals, plus additional t-shirts, um, additional dice, Right on wipe off character sheets. Um, you yeah. got um, story, please, which was a, an additional cards, it was also and it was a venture building deck, I believe. Right. You got all that added on additional, yeah, absolutely worth it. You know, once again, I the only reason why I didn't back it is because I already had two copies of No Thank You Evil <laughs> and I just repurchased the stuff, you know, with a couple of coupons I had. And yeah. um, like I said, I got all the extras, and I gave her the the box set. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I I backed it the the reprint uh, Kickstarter because I didn't I wasn't around. I, mean, I wasn't even playing Cypher System when No Thank You Evil first got kickstarted. I think I'm not sure. I forget when I got in or when that Kickstarter happened. But either way, it's very worth it. Um, honestly, uh, No Thank You Evil is the, I've been playing that the most compared to anything <laughs> else recently because um. I now have a five-year-old stepdaughter. Uh, she just turned five, like, last week. So she was four before that. We were playing No Thank You Evil, and she really likes it. And, again, she'll just come and, like, what, what, we're going to play No Thank You Evil? I'm just like, all right, let's do it. And we'll just, she'll tell me what she wants to do, and we'll just run a story based off that. I don't even, and, again, she she knows she understands the dice, the, like, the tokens. If you want to make something easier, you got to give me one of the tokens or whatever. I just tell you which one. Um... And yeah, like, like I said, this is the most gaming I've done in person in, in, in like forever because all the gaming's online now. So it's funny enough, funny enough, uh, my most in-game playing is now No Thank You Eve with my stepdaughter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like I said earlier, it's a well-designed game. You know, even if you're not playing with children, you could actually pull out No Thank You Evil and have a satisfying of game session with it. Yep. Just so you guys know, and for all you people out there in internet land watching this, um, I'm probably going to use No Thank You Evil, um, which, which I had to can't why I had to cancel my game this weekend. Um, I'm going to uh, an event for veterans and disabled vets, and um, I'm taking No Thank You Evil and Cypher System to introduce these vets with. PTSD and you know things like that for therapy purposes. Um, oh, that's so, awesome! Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I think it's going to go over pretty, pretty big. Um, I introduced a couple of guys with PTSD um, to Cipher System, and 
I got some feedback, and I, I'm just pretty stoked about it. These guys were on, uh, one guy was on eight meds, the other guy was on 16 medications. Oof. Both of their medications were cut in half after the past uh, six weeks of them going through a therapy class and playing RPGs. That's awesome. And it's strictly cypher system. You know, um, I, th- I think uh, I- I've played my three old twin boys. They have yet to um, actually play, but I'm going to eventually get them down again. But my daughter has played a ton of No Thank You Evil, and we've played the Smurfs. We've played My Little Pony. You know, we- we've played Pusheen. <laughs> You know, and it also encouraged her to learn D and D because she saw all my other books, and you know, she's actually run games. So it was like you know, like the gateway drug into role playing for her. So exactly. I'm, a, I'm gonna be you know, eternally grateful for No Thank You Evil and you know, for, to Shana Jermaine for creating it. So absolutely. Are we yes, ready? I'm- oh, so it's uh, see you for No Thank You Evil. Yeah. Yep. All right, so this one is, um, I think, the most controversial of all the Kickstarters. This is our last Kickstarter. But um, Arcana of Ancients, the 5e compatible version of Numenera. Oh, at least it didn't start off that way. So we're going to, we're going to, um, they had 5,536 backers. They raised $520,207. And to get every book and every PDF, you had to pledge 160 bucks, which I did. I'll go over. I I don't know if your guys backed it at that level, but that's what I yeah. backed. I'll, I'll go first on this one. Oh, hold on. Let me go over. What do you get? Okay. Yeah. All right. You get Beasts of Flesh and Steel, which is basically a monster manual of the Numenera monsters, but 5e compatible, which is pretty cool. Uh, you get the once again you get the deluxe core book so you get a second version of the book but the deluxe version then you get beneath the monolith which is basically an adventure but for 5e in the Numenera universe then uh, let me see what else is this Uh, then you get where the machines wait which is another adventure path for the 5e universe you get the j colossus conversion guide which i don't believe it's a conversion of the actual game but it's allowing you to use j colossus and shows you how to convert the j colossus adventure that's currently in the numenera line to the 5e version which is a great adventure if you haven't done you should pick that up just for the dungeon generator alone even if you don't run adventures you should absolutely pick up j colossus is an awesome book then you get uh, more monsters at it. Uh, oh, you, you oh you get a copy of the J Colossus, the Numenero PDF, and that's it, right? Yep. What about the Numenera conversion book? That is, let me see, beneath the monolith. Okay. All right. So that being said, <laughs> um, I did not back it at all. Um, I don't play 5e anymore and well let me let me rephrase that. I don't run 5e anymore. I'll probably play 5e um, this just didn't call me if I want to play Numenera I'm going to play Numenera I don't need Numenera in my d and um, I absolutely think Monty Cook is smart my MCG games, I think it's a, a great, you know, methodology to hopefully get some people to look at this and wonder, hey, I wonder what the, what, what, where this came from. I wonder what this is like. And, you know, kind of jump over, you know, and uh, try Numenera, you know, and, and just try the Cypher system in general because, you know, I get it, you know, D and D is the juggernaut. You know, forget the five hundred pound gorilla. D and D is the juggernaut right now. It is not stopping. Five E is on fire. You know, and it does open the doorway to 
all of for all of us in all of the realms of other RPGs and you know the more narrative styles of running and stuff like that you know it gives us the opportunity to pull people in and you know what Monty Cook kudos for snatching a piece of market share um this just wasn't one for me I you know and you know and I'm, I'm saying it now and I'll probably end up picking up a book here or there the same way end up with Invisible Sun <laughs> you know you know because I want it on my shelf you know it's, it, you know I, I, I'm a bit of a completist <laughs> um but um overall for me this was just um it just didn't work for me it, I, I initially I was a little bit hurt and I'll have to be honest I was I was a little bit like why is he giving the D and D jerks my game? <laughs> they don't belong, they, you know. And then I had to think about it. Business, yeah. it works. <coughs> it's definitely a very strong business move. Um, and I'm in the same boat as you, Dean. I also did not back it. Um, I'm I'm a cipher guy. I play cipher system. Um, Numenera, like I said, is a nice setting and all that. But again, I like making my own stuff when I play cipher system or Monica game stuff. Um, so having Numenera and 5e, while it's very nice, uh, I don't play 5e, I don't, I don't even have any 5e books anymore, like, when I left New York City, I just gave them all away to my brother-in-law, like, I, I don't even have these books anymore, so it's like, it's kind of pointless for me to have more 5e mm -hmm. stuff when I don't even have the base 5e books anymore, like, it's, um, that's not my system, that, and again, I'm just not, not saying it's a bad thing if you like 5e, like, cause it is an awesome system. I, I like I like playing it. I only ran it once, a long time ago. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, but now that we have Cipher System and Numenera, like, what's the, what's the point? You know, like we have we have the system we prefer, and it's already there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we don't need more books. To, like, you know, we don't need we don't need books to f play Five E because, again, I know how I don't know how you guys are. I mean, I know how you guys are, but I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> But when I see something new like that I enjoy, like in this case, it'll be a D and D person seeing Numenera. For me, it'd be like, hey, I see something I like. I'm gonna convert it to Cypher System, <laughs> not not the other. I'm not gonna convert. I I don't think, hey, I, this would be awesome to play in Five E. No, no, no. I think, that, hey, this would be awesome to play in Cypher System or Numenera. So, you know, what, what you saying that Al? <laughs> um, what you just said actually moves this whole thing up a notch. I, I still won't certify it cypher but you know it, it doesn't get a certified cypher from me but it moves it up a notch because now there's another cool portion because now those people who are playing 5e Numenera you know they'll be saying something I'm like you know what try this out let me, let me, let me show you how it really works you know so now I can kind of like pull them into a cypher system game and show them the real coolness the new hotness <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to take a deep breath before I even start talking. I did back this at the maximum level, and just like I gave you all the numbers, this for 160 bucks. if you calculate 50 bucks a book plus $100 for the deluxe edition, once again, you've given me a second copy of a book I already own. It still only comes up to 300 bucks. So out of all the Kickstarters we reviewed, it's only a $140 net gain compared to $400 on average for the other three Kickstarters. I, I'll throw that out there first. So overall, I don't think it's that much. I mean, it's still a net gain, but it isn't it as difficult. It, yeah, it isn't as well as the other three Kickstarters we spoke about, but I, I'll just put that out there. But um I I still like 5e. I'll still play 5e. I do not run 5e, but um, I still enjoy the game. And I'll, I'll put it all out there also as a disclaimer. I still purchase every book that 5e releases. I still own every 5e book. I have every up-to-date book on the 5e line, including the third-party publishers that put out, you know, I'm just a collector. That's what I do. But... I backed it because of my love for Monica games. I did not back this 
I, I didn't have the excitement like I had. If anything, I had more fear. Especially when when it was first all kind of the ancients and it was like, hey, we're giving you concepts of Numenera, but we're not porting over the game. You know, we're giving you concepts of Numenera that we could you could put in into a 5e game. But the minute they decided to port over the game, my biggest fear that I thought was, hey, this is going to just take away Numenera players to the bigger pool. And I, I mean, I could be wrong, but you know, my fear is if you have a pool of 50,000 players and you know, we run a rather big server and it still takes us one or two days to get a, a campaign going on our server. Yeah. Find me, you could show up into any game store and jump in a campaign. So, you know, my fear was, okay, you're gonna pull from these 50,000 people that are playing to this pool of almost a million people and it might actually take away some of the players and and it's gonna hurt the overall beauty of Numenera and the game system because like I've said in many videos before I love Numenera but the cipher system rule set is what I'm really enamored with the, the cipher system rule set is like <laughs> I said. it's so simple but the elegance is unimaginable with that said, right, you know, um, I am curious to see how how the port over the 5e is going to work. You know, I, I think a lot of the stuff is going to be interesting, especially I'm curious to see what the monster manual is going to look like. You know, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of monster books. And I'm curious to see what some of the iconic Numenera monsters are going to look like in 5e. But even though I backed it at the maximum level, I I just can't bring it to myself to give it a full CU. <laughs> it's an intrusion. I, 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 give, a C, a C. I give it a C. Yeah, I give it a C. Same. Even I though it, I didn't back I it. A, I give it an it's an intrusion. Mm -hmm. I get a C. I, I got I gotta give it an intrusion because to me it's intrude because I feel the same like I said, I feel the same thing. I feel like it it has the possibility to pull away from our our player base you know um, I, I'm afraid of that um, but like you said I mean I don't plan on running any 5e <coughs> you know I mean somebody might be able to convince me to do it I have a ton of 5e books you know and like I said certain ones still call out to me and I still purchase um, yeah, five, five is an excellent system. No it's an excellent saying. system. I love it. I mean, don't get like I said. I just don't. I'm spoiled. Mm -hmm. I'm spoiled with 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 cipher system. I'm spoiled with invisible sun. Those those games speak to. They speak to me. You know? And you know, and even with the 140 net game, you're still going to get use out of these books. Because the adventure book, you can still, even if you have no plans of running a 5e adventure, you can still use it in your normal Numenera game. You know, like I, to be honest, I really didn't have a, a problem with all kind of answers. I started getting the, you know, the queasy feeling in my stomach when they was like, okay, we're just doing a direct port. You know, that's when I started, when it was just all kind of the answers, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. You know, like I, I wasn't. I, I think you know, and I think that's probably what pushed me. That's what pushed me not to, to back it when they said the direct port. Because mm -hmm. remember, I was on the fence, mm -hmm. and they was like, "Oh, there it is." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm not doing it. I can't." <laughs> I, I mean, I backed it because I'm a back out. I'm sure I'll find something useful with it. But out of all the kickstarters we discussed, this is probably the least one I'm most excited about. You know, you know, like all of us, we cipher guys. To know for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the only one of the uh, six kick scarters that we dis um, discuss that probably doesn't get a thumbs up grade. It doesn't get a, it gets a sideways. I, mean, I, 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 I give it a GM intrusion. I give it a yeah, sideways yeah. thumb. Like I said, it, it's an intrusion. In, in, but hey, you What's know what? It's a hand sign for intrusion, like. And, <laughs> and um. Probably in the next six to eight months, I'll probably, you know, or six to eight months after it comes out, 
I'll probably have at least, you know, one or two of the books on my shelf anyway. I know myself. But just that initial... Who are you fooling? Gen Con 2020, you buy no four of those books. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, boy. And I'm oh. going to have them sign it. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> all right, um, so we went over all the Kickstarters. It's no secret that Monty Cook Games are masters of the business plan of Kickstarter. The question I have for you guys is, do you think this is a, a sustainable business model? Um, is there, a, is there a, like a follow-up question or is that, is that the whole... Like, do you think it's... A, and do you think they will continue going forward as releasing all their books through Kickstarter? It's worked for them for the last three and a half years, four years. As, as long as it's lucrative, yeah. I, You know what? The old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And again, I mean, oh. I, I see I see this reality here. Um, Bonnie Cook averages, it seems, about 5,000 back. Somewhere near, you know, three five hundred thousand. I mean, I'll get five thousand backers, five hundred thousand per Kickstarter. But I'm saying, just five thousand backers and five thousand backers, you're making five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I'd do it. <laughs> I mean, if if I had if I if I had, I I I wouldn't you know I wouldn't stop until it's broken. And oh, I oh. think. I think the only thing I might do was maybe slow down a little bit because I wouldn't want to. Be, I, I don't want the market saturated. I think you're thinking about it from your own point of view, where you, they're just draining your money, and you're like, "Whoa, slow down! Let me build up some money before you start taking some more." <laughs> well, no, I'm saying, it's, it's, but as a consumer, that's the only way you can. Look that's, at. Yeah, I'm a consumer, and I'm thinking about it as other consumers too. And I'm also thinking about it in a sense of too, though, if you put too much content out before the people can consume it, the, the content itself, then you just you you then you're just gonna get to the point of bloat. And bloat is not good. Whenever bloat happens, that's when games go the way of the dodo bird. And I'm just looking at it in that sense. I mean, you look at Numenera, Numenera is massive. Numenera has a lot of content. I, I own every book and I haven't read two thirds of them. Oh, <laughs> I own it. I, I own every book. Months, I'm getting something in the mail and I'm like, yeah, oh, man. God. You know, thank God that I read pretty damn fast. You know, and so when I get a book, you know, I start consuming it. So within, you know, at least a few days, I might be halfway done. Uh, this might sound rude and funny, but I, I got three small children, so I have two reading places the bathroom and on the train to work. <laughs> Right, right, and I understand. I was, I was there too, but so you know that's an advantage for me. But like I said, Numenera is massive. Numenera has a lot to consume, and as a game master or storyteller, you know, you want. I mean, you want to use the stuff you buy, and then, you know, on the other side, being a player. If the if the options are all over the place, that becomes problematic too, because then you're you know and in some of the content I don't want the player to have access to or you know would even want to have access to, but you know, um, you know, Priest of the Aeon, that book right there is a prime example of a book that has game master stuff in it and player stuff in it. And you know what? Can we cut it in half and you know make this the player books? <laughs> you know, but you know that's just me. All right, as a consumer, right? Let, let me phrase it this way: as a consumer, not as the Cypher Unlimited guys who we Cypher Unlimited fanboys. Everybody knows that. But as a consumer, do you prefer to purchase your books through Kickstarter and wait, or do you prefer to have a release date schedule? know similar to like the other bigger companies and just you know order it from their website or going to a, a mom and pop shop and just picking it up i mean personally um what you call it when you when you have when there's a kickstart involved and we touched on this basically throughout the whole video 
Um, not only are you buying the product that you're kickstarting, whatever have you, usually there's bonuses involved where there hit stretch goals and new stuff gets added. And let's say you wait instead of like the in your scenario, you know, you, we wait or excuse me, instead of the Kickstarter, they just put out the books normally and then we buy them, you know, street date whenever they come out. You if if you're thinking about the money spent on a Kickstarter versus the money spent, you know, let's say they all released fifty dollars each or whatever, have you forty five dollars and, you're, and then you're having to individually buy each of these books. Um, it ends up being way more than what you would have invested in a Kickstarter. Um simply because it's already out there's no like I mean, there's no waiting there's no what is it risk of failure on their end or whatever have you I mean, I'm not again I'm not saying Monty Cook Games ever not backed or, or you know never not delivered on what they you know kickstarted they but absolutely that, haven't but, I mean they've been immaculate when no. it comes to it you is know, it is a right. but it is a thing with some kickstarters like you'll yeah. you'll back a kickstarter and then some you know, like four years later you're you're still not have not gotten what you've you know been promised, and again that's not an issue with Monty Good Games, but it is an issue with some kickstarters, and that would be the biggest like difference between buying it you know street date being published normally and versus a kickstarter. I mean, proven track records for me work. Um, I, I, I'm a. Uh, I was gonna, I'm sorry, Dean. You could get, go ahead. I'm just saying, proven track records work. Yeah. I'm the person who will give. I'll give anybody a shot. You know, I'll give you a chance, but you're only going to get that initial chance to mess me over once. You know, I've, and I've been pretty fortunate with Kickstarter. So, I've only been burned on a Kickstarter once. Yeah, I think I've only been burned once too. So my thing is, as far as Monty Cook games are concerned, you know, this this is a way. I put it this way. For the quality of book that I get from them and the amount of money that I spend, you know, I would definitely continue to do it this way. I don't mind waiting because to me, it's it's, it's like Christmas. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, I mean, I love coming home from work. You know, I work seven in the morning to seven at night. And I love walking into my on my son porch before I unlock my door. And there's a box sitting, you know, in that box, you know, and I open it up and it's a nice, shiny, beautiful MCG book, you know, <laughs> or, or, or whatever, you know, and I'm excited. So, you know, especially if I have nothing going on that evening, those two hours, three hours before I go to bed or just to lay down, I've got, you know, some great new eye candy. You know, and it's it's great. Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't mind, you know, supporting the mom and pop, the brick and mortar stores. I like doing that too. But, you know, the brick and mortar store, it is what it is. You know, it's not like it used to be either. You know, they're not the same. They're businesses. They're big businesses now. And they got gas bills and light bills and everything else just like we do. And, you know, they do what they have to do. So, you know, to walk in, you know, and see a book sitting on a shelf for fifty nine ninety nine, but knowing I've got that one plus three more for the same price. Yeah. I, I mean, I will say this. Um, I can let <coughs> you guys know I purchase everything. You know, I back at the highest level on 99% of their Kickstarters. You know, like that, that, but I will play the devil's advocate. I think there's some issue with having a, a business model that deals only in Kickstarters. I think it delays the overall release of core books, the main book on the Kickstarter. And I think the average gamer who, you know, it's the one in five thing you always say, Dean, you know, there's one GM to every five players. Yeah. And I think the five players don't care about all these extra bonus books. They only care about the core book, this is like true. the main book. So it delays the release of the core book because they're planning out, you know, these five or six books that they have on this Kickstarter, laying them out. So in, in some sense, you know, it does hurt the average gamer who's not necessarily trying to be a GM. He just wants to buy the core book. He just wants to show up and get this $150 book, you know, it doesn't affect the three of us because we happen to, we want every book, 
but I could see how it could affect the average gamer. Well, I could the guy say that just wants to pick up a book. One I could book. say I could say yay and nay on that too, mm. because think of it this way: nine times out of ten, just just look at how Monty Cook Kickstarters go. Mm. Um, the core book, it'll be okay. The the, the core book has, let's say, arbitrarily uh, four hundred. It, it it has three hundred pages. Okay. So they've already planned out, this is 300 pages, but they probably have the book completely laid out and ready to go, in most cases, or 50, 60% done, okay? And then they're going, okay, well, Kickstarter went so good, we're gonna add an additional 100 pages, and I'm getting a 400 page book. So yeah, I know they gotta do some additional content, or this is content that they had sitting to the side already that would have been a I uh, totally disagree, D. I could disagree with you more. <laughs> and, and I'll explain to you why. Let's just look at our Canada Anchors. I'm looking at the numbers right now. April 12th was the end date of the Kickstarter. Not till March 2020, which is an entirely and a whole year, you have to wait just for the main core book. Now, and, we, I, and, and I'm going to only, only, only reason I'm arguing that. Well, hold on. Let me just state my case before you say I'm wrong. <laughs> Right. No, I'm not saying you're wrong. If you if you look at like let's just use D and D as a business model, they release the the release date of a gay uh, of a book, and then it's released four months later. So you have a four month build up to say, hey, I want to buy this book. It's coming out in four months. Here, okay. you, you're giving someone your money, and you're not expecting the product for an entire year. Okay. And let, let let's take a let's take a step back. And I'm gonna, and the only reason again I'm playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I don't care. I prefer to wait a year, but I'm just getting. Yeah. The, like the, I said, I don't mind waiting a year either. The only thing I'm gonna say about that is, and this is where I'm. This is where my thing with the Kickstarter, my issue with it is, by do, as far as I'm concerned, coming out with one every year. You haven't completed your other stuff, so you're working on completing other stuff, and that's why your date is a year later yeah but that, 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 but that goes all in all with is that you know is this business model well but this is my point and my point the is, average gamer what i'm saying and that's my my point is i'm and maybe it's just me mm -hmm. but i still think about things from from a from an older perspective i remember how they would announce books in the back of books back in the good old days yeah. and it would tell you the book was coming a year later so i got a whole year though the one book and i every time i get to this particular area in the book it's a reminder that next year here comes monster <coughs> or whatever and i think monty cook games with the kickstarter is kind of doing a similar thing but because we're in the realm of instant gratification everybody goes and I don't want to wait a year. I want that book now. And like you're saying, I get it. So I think it's like six of one, half dozen of the other. You know, here's yeah. Here's no, I don't think it makes a difference for the core base. I don't. I don't think it makes a difference for the GM. But I do think it makes a difference for the average gamer. And I think most gamers aren't fanatical like we are. No, most gamer. Most gamers. You think about it. If you think. If, and again, we can use D&D as that example. D&D, we always can go back to that. Um, most players have a player's handbook. They don't have a Dungeon Master's Guide. They don't have a Monster Man. You know, they have a player's handbook. And I think, you know, and but that's the difference. Now, most books that come out, not, they're not just Cypher System, but most books now, are it's one core book and in that core book mm -hmm. there is the player stuff and the game master stuff and I, I i really think the model should come back where you have game master books and player books what we're talking about with eric crankhouse i love i i, I love my old and i'm gonna say that as ugly word tour that we <laughs> can't want to but i love tour the old box set 
You know, yeah. I, I got that. I purchased that book. I've actually purchased the three book set that you recommended. I haven't actually uh, cracked it open. I'm ashamed to say. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying that the the original box set, mm-hmm. the original box set, it, it was really cool. The original box set had a game master book, and a player book, and it had an adventure book. You know, but it was a box set. You know, um, these things. I think these things work. Monty Cook Games. Their uh, Numenera, um, their Numenera box set, their starter kit, brilliant. I think it, you know, and I would love more stuff like that, where it's kind of broken down. That's just kind of me. Um, this is the last question I'm gonna ask for the night because um, this video is actually running pretty long. <laughs> Here's the the last question I have for you guys. Out of all the Monty Cook Games Kickstarters, right? What do you think one is the best deal, and two is what's you input your you personally are most excited about? Me personally, and I, you know, is the one that I did have some disparages with, but it's your best game ever, ever. I'm totally in. Utter, I want. I cannot wait to get my grimy little grubby hands or massive big hands, however you want to look at it, on that CSI revised. You know, I want the Cypher System rule book, the revised edition. I want it, I want it, and I want it yesterday. You know, and then the fact that I get four more settings, you know, to me it's just like World of the Cypher System number two. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, getting unmasked, predation, gods of the fall was it was it was candy store i read i consumed all three of those books from cover to cover and i can't wait to get my hands on the stars of fire god forsaken we are all mad here and stay alive those got my juices flowing i got so many ideas and i don't even know what the hell is in the page inside the books <laughs> um and i guess the same goes for me i'm most excited about that one uh because again, I've said it a hundred times in this video already. I love Cipher System, um, so for me, the biggest draw is getting that revised Cipher Core book. Because again, that's the b- book I end up using the most. So that will be the book I end up using the most going forward. <laughs> um, and again, I I think it's probably also the best bang for your buck, considering you do get those four setting books as well, and not to mention the stuff in you know the main part of the Kickstarter, the, the, the your best game ever. Your books. best game ever, yeah. Um and you get all that stuff. And what was it, two sixty, two eighty? I forget the number yeah, was, on that 260. one. Two sixty. Two sixty on that one. And again, if you average each book about and I like to under undervalue, I don't give it the fifty dollar value, even though that usually is what they end up costing. I do it the forty. Even at forty it's just so much you end up save, saving so much money. It's it's I feel like again, best bang for your buck also. I, I think uh, me personally, the best bang for your buck. It's ironically the one Kickstarter I, out of the four major ones that I didn't back. I think the best bang for your buck now, looking back, is probably the Invisible Sun Kickstarter, even at the five twenty nine price point. I think you get so much for it. You do on the outside looking in, but the most anticipated, best game ever, hands down. <laughs> well, I, I Not even close. But I think your best bang for your buck was actually the Invisible Sun Kickstarter. Invisible Sun, well, again, how Monty ported that, it was a premium game. So for it to be a premium, and I, I look at it, I, I agree, and I can't, and I kind of don't, only because it's one game, it's self-contained. Where I'm looking at your best game ever and everything that comes with it, you've got possibly okay maybe that's how we should look at it no but i'm look i'm just looking at the sheer dollar value and the stuff that you get because not only did you get the the cube who arguably is probably worth 300 dollars on its own you know just the contents on the cube but you got an additional six books plus you know there was a, a a ton of other stuff that was added on just for the sheer value i'm not talking about like what's a better game or what's a okay stick. so we're just talking about money value like value wise i'll go with that most anticipated your best one. yeah and uh, the one thing we didn't mention is in it they raised three million one hundred and eleven thousand and two dollars 
in two and a half years. Great job, Monica Games. You guys are awesome. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine any gaming company that wants to get into Kickstarter. They have to look at Monica Games and see the success they had and emulate them because they're doing something right. Well, again, I, the, the, my thing is, I, I think they, I think Monty Cook Games does care about their community. And I think they kind of listen and they, they damn sure deliver. So I think that that's the, the, the crux of it all. They deliver. I think that was a pretty good, um, very, very succinct way to end our little discussion here. Like they, they deliver. Yeah. Because <laughs> all their Kickstarters are very solid, regardless of what you're speaking of. Like just what you get for what you put in, it's always worth it. Like even if, even with the, um, I forget which one we said or you said, Anthony, was the one you get the least amount of extra stuff. Was it Arcana of the Ancients? Yeah. Even in that situation, you still get more value yeah, than still, what you put in. You were still up one hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, like even in that situation, still very worth it. And you know, if, if they keep doing Kickstarters going forward, and again, as we've seen in the history of Monica Games, they're good at what they do. Like they put out solid stuff, and I think that would that's what keeps them able to keep doing this. Is that the audience us? knows that their product is going to be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they deliver. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think that's all we've really got to say on all these topics. Um, you know, it was an awesome talk. You know, thank you guys for watching, whoever might be watching. You know, we really appreciate, you know, all the community support we've been getting. Um, you know, keep an eye out on the links below for our descriptions. Um, they're... I don't know what we're going to link, Anthony, but we'll link some stuff. We, we, could, we, could, we, could, um, uh, we already have the Monica Cook Games store, but we could link um, at least the Arcana of the Ages because I believe you could still back that. Now. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's still possible for a couple more days or maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, but, so, yeah. Uh, well, well, before you before you take us out of here, Al, um, one other thing, people, is if you subscribe to us, great. If you're on our Discord channel, great. Um, throw some more suggestions out there for you know some uh, some more editorials for us to do. I mean, we love doing the interviews. We, we love doing our GM roulettes, which is coming back to you. But definitely, you know, send us some suggestions if there's some content or something you want us to dis discuss or go over or you know because. We want to expand, and we want to keep our audience happy, too. We want to be living. And, and with what Dean said, too, if, if you know of any content creators that either working with Cypher or otherwise, you know, independent game designers that you think would be great to have on the show, um, you know, reach out to us and let us know who they are, and we'll definitely contact them and try to get them on the show. And as a matter of fact, those are the links we should put down there. Put down all of our email addresses or, you know, contacts. So that way people, you know, if you want to talk to me or you want to talk to Al or Anthony, you know, if we've said something as an individual that resonates, you know, again, feel free. You can always find me all over uh, anywhere as Alpha Dean. I'm on Twitch, you know, Instagram, everything. So look me up, people, you know. Look us up. Yeah, I mean, if you're here, you already know what we do, how to find us. But but again, I don't know if our email is made public, so we'll definitely be sure to include uh, that. Our email, our email and Twitter are already on our description. Right, so awesome. Not, not not I'm on my job. Not not our <laughs> not our individual ones. Though, yeah, but I the, can of that right now. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, you know, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, like, share, subscribe. Um. The only way we can continue to do this is with your support. And, uh, yeah, from us at the CU, we will see you later. <laughs>